Welcome back to The Ref Show. A lot of uh, championship uh, drama uh, to come. But first of all, that uh, ugly subject of simulation. But some applause from various Ref Show panels for the fact that the FA have started to try to punish uh, cheats, uh, in quotes. And the ass of Everton are serving a suspension uh, in uh, a case that has actually established that contact uh, on a player in the area does not entitle him to go to ground. And that seems to be a very important fundamental principle that has now been established against the culture of the game where yes. players have thought, uh, not every player, but have sort of understood a code. If I'm contacted there, I'm entitled to go down. No longer, Keith. No, absolutely. And, and that has always been the case. And mm. I think it's been a misunderstanding that the media have probably looked and said, well, this contact, he's got away with it. In reality, players will manufacture content, contact. They will lean left, lean right, or even have their foot out waiting to, to make contact in that way. Uh, so for me, one great praise for the FA for bringing this in. Uh, I still think, however, they've got to go another step mm. uh, because I think that I, I'm unhappy about the imbalance that when a player gets a yellow card from the referee who's seen the act of simulation, that's the yellow card and it, it goes yeah. to the top. Well, we've got goal. an example of that, exactly that, in mm. the Huddersfield-Manchester City game, the Premier League leaders win again by 2-1, but great uh, performance from Huddersfield to hold it so close. And Craig Pawson's the man in yeah. the middle here, and he cautions Fernandinho for simulation in that game. Taking Keith's point, it's no punishment at all, really, a yellow card, is it? No, well... You know, it's the punishment that is there in the laws of the game at the moment. So mm. the referee can only carry that out uh, in accordance with that. Craig Pawson, it's a great decision. It is. It's a great decision. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Keith's right in terms of the imbalance between if you get caught, you get a yellow card. If you don't get caught, you can end up with a suspension. But if you don't get caught, the rewards are greater because yeah. you're either insinuating a penalty or you're getting another player sent off. So there's some benefit within the game, hence the reason that you, you punish yeah. for it after. Well, move there on. is a third one, yeah. Alan, if yes. I may, because you've mentioned in part one, Atkinson. Yes. And this clear act of simulation. Yes. Which was seen by Martin Atkinson. West Ham yeah. Leicester, 1-1. One, one. This is Friday night's game, and this is yeah. Andre Ayew yeah. of West so Ham. So he's seen the offence. Uh, he's read it correctly. It is simulation. He's not awarded the penalty kick that the player was looking for, yeah. but he takes no action. Mm. So here's the third one. Mm. That player has got away with it. Yeah. He had the same yeah. uh, aim yeah. as the one that has the yellow yes. card or the one that actually yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, receives retrospective action like Niasi afterwards. And the referee the referee should really be able to look at all the cases. I, 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 that's what that I'm That included. Thinking. Right, okay. For sure. And that was Martin Atkinson's game. Obviously you referred to a, a great performance from him. Yes. And I think also uh, for Craig Pawson, because he had some big calls to make in Huddersfield, Manchester City, a, a equalising penalty for City. Uh, Rav, Rajiv Van Lepara just sent off for a clash after full time. Yeah. No arguments he's on having a good season. Case. He's having I think, yeah. I good think season. he's just putting a little bit more effort in. I still like more mobility from him. Yeah. In fairness, because I think he does tend to act on the radar and looks quite a considerable distance away at times from the game yes. when he's making decisions. That will not help him in Europe. No. Because if you look at recent matches that we see on television in Europa and the Champions League, I haven't seen a referee that's not mobile. Mm. Just uh, briefly, La Liga in Spain, you drew my attention to this earlier today, uh, a messy goal disallowed over the weekend. Uh, it was over the line, but they haven't got goal line technology I, I, there. That's I astonishing, would, isn't it? Well, I'm, I, I'm just stunned by it. Because, yeah. you know, you take it for granted that it's operated so well in the Premier League. It's now part of the furniture. That, that problem for referees and match officials has gone away. Yeah. And you go to another competition that's in that's regarded as one of the best in the world. Yeah. No goal line technology. No goal line technology. It's incredible. Amazing. And the championship's got it. And we yes. come on to the championship in it's England Just on now. that point, Alan, sorry, on yeah. the messy one, I've got to say, goal line technology or not, this decision was, wasn't it, was a straightforward decision. Right. I mean, if the assistant's in the right place where they should have been, following yeah. the ball down to the goal line, you'd have given that okay. all day. Like, it was a good yard and a half over the line. 
Fair enough. I know you had eyes, Keith, on the Yorkshire Derby. Leeds winning 2-0 at Barnsley over the weekend. And the Barnsley keeper, Adam Davis, had the sun in his eyes in the first half. Did a supporter actually give him a cap or something to wear? <laughs> the supporter shouted, he walked away and put it on. Yeah. Right. Which was, which was uh, absolutely spot on. Yeah. I understand that particular goalkeeper does not like wearing caps. Wearing caps. And in fact... Uh, he, uh, he quickly took it off. Right, but he, he but joined a, in the spirit. Typical. Typ joined yeah, in the spirit. Yeah. Talking about the spirit of the game, none better than in Norwich Preston. Now, it was a 1 1 draw that probably would have hardly rated a mention. Uh, Tim Robinson was the man in the middle. Had not there been a drama and a long hold up, the assistant referee was injured. He was replaced by the fourth official, Andy Davis, and there was nobody to replace the fourth official. And a, a Norwich City fan called David Spud Thornhill, that came out of the crowd. <laughs> Brilliant. You could, great. You could, yeah. To, he had, had to take, take his, his shirt off, off Al. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but I thought that was amazing. I, I, I queried that because actually the referee, I, from reading the report, took the players off. Yeah. Oh, no, sorted I, it. I think, he was, I think he was going to. I don't think they had right. to end it. But okay. he, uh, to be fair to Tim Robinson as well as the referee, yeah. that can really have an effect on you as a, as a match official and he didn't let it he sort of sorted no. it out took took should, a while because there were 10 minutes added time should at the there end not of be the, a spare man yeah, it? well it's listen, it's happened so infrequently the, that where do you draw the line because yeah. you could have five officials six officials set you know because s some people get injured so it, it doesn't happen that frequently on the football no, league but yeah, when no. it does i mean to be honest i would have continued the game depending on how long was left without a full official if needed you know yeah. it, but the, the referee's done the right thing he's put a call out guys come down and good luck to him. He's he's had he's had a fantastic weekend. Fair play. To well, him. he had to hold hold up the board, which showed ten minutes ten of minutes, stoppage really time. Amazing. You really know, amazing. there's a moments of glory almost. Yeah, I think every, but, everybody but he's enjoyed also got it. To know how to use the board? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not simple, is it? No, I, 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 I never got used the, to it. No, <laughs> it's not simple. <laughs> he kept the technical areas in check, good and I'm sure there was a lot of great banter going on. Yeah, so yeah. we all enjoyed that. Um, an incident that both you guys have looked at. Uh, Paul Tierney was the man in the middle for Fulham's 1-0 win over Millwall. And uh, Neil Harris felt that the referee was... was co he said, well, he was conned by Rui Fonte going to ground for what proved to be the match-winning penalty. Uh, I, I thought the reaction from the player was exaggerated, but I think you're con fairly convinced it was a penalty. I thought it was a penalty. And I, and I think yeah. what gives it away for me is when Paul moves in, and cautions the player who's pushed. He sort of shrugs his shoulders and he'll say, fair cut. Yeah. There was no reaction from so the defensive spot, players. Then. It was a very good spot because it came from, a, a, the ball was played from left to right. So very often as a referee, and Keith used to talk about this, he's keeping your body shape open rather yeah. than focusing on just the ball. Because if he'd have focused on the ball, by the time he'd have turned around, he'd have missed it. So yeah. good body shape, good, good movement and good spot. Excellent. But right. one point, why is this referee not being disrespectful to the two clubs? Mm. Why is he refereeing those games? He's, he, you know, we've got people who are going to retire at the end yeah, of the year in the Premier League. Yeah. He's proven to me that he's capable of refereeing yeah. Premier League games. He delivers them. Mm. Why not just get him a run of games? <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm worried about a succession planning. Very worried because you look at, you know, it, we've got an ageing workforce on the Premier. We spoke about this last year. Well, and if we don't start giving the likes of Tierney, Atwell, Cavana, Madley, Mm. Premier League games on a regular basis, they're not going to mm. be ready. You've also got an older <coughs> referee here going in, Keith Stroud, who's been involved in one or two incidents again just lately. Um, he had all on at the weekend again, Wolves 5, Bolton 1. Uh, dismissing, well, this is firm and firm action, I suppose, and I haven't read anything that suggests it's incorrect. He dismissed both Wolves, Nino, Espirito, Santo and Bolton's Phil Parkinson, sent off just before half-time. I think they, they were reacting to a challenge by Bolton's David Wheater. Uh, on Jota and the, a clash ensued. The, the, the managers shouldn't get involved like that, should they? No, yeah. I mean, uh, the one thing about Keith Stroud is he's a very experienced official. He's been mm. around a long time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's a referee who doesn't look for controversy. Uh, it may visit him occasionally, as it does all referees. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's sad that players react in that way, managers react in that way. Let's yeah. see the outcome of... Uh, what the punishment will be. Well, you'd think the FA would look at that in terms of a, a touchline ban. Um, they usually do, don't they, mm. when, the, when there's a dismissal from the bench. Mm. But both of them going like that. Having said all that, Wolves football is an absolute joy under this manager. Uh, they've spent big 
Mm. But they're playing some fantastic mm. stuff, aren't yeah, they? they are. At the top of the championship. And well done against Anil Warnock of uh, Cardiff City with a 2-0 victory at Nottingham Forest. Mark Warburton was unhappy in this game, thought there was a foul in the build-up to the first goal. Uh, and he felt his side were denied a penalty there in, in that game. Just the top and tail. Lots of incident. We can't get focus on every team, your team, and every game, but we do our best to take a cross-section every weekend. And thanks again to our guys on the panel, Dean Maharib and Keith Hackett. Thank you to you for your company. Don't forget, you are the Ref's Academy channel. It's an absolute unique opportunity to improve your refereeing career. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye-bye.